Everyone has heard of the Gladius, the famous sword that built the Empire of Rome. Looking at this blade, you might believe that you were looking at a Gladius right now. But this is actually a smaller cousin, the Puggio. While remarkably similar in shape and appearance to the Gladius, it is its own unique blade with its own origin and history. And believe it or not, you already know about some of its handiwork. Today on The Knife Life, we're going to be looking at the blade that killed Caesar. So what exactly is the Puggio? It is always a large, double-edged waisted dagger with a bilobular grip. In fact, the grip is the fastest way to identify the Puggio. While Puggios have various different pommel styles throughout the centuries, the knob located in the center of the grip is always present in some form. While finger stops on blade grips are common throughout various cultures, the size of the Puggio's grip lobe is not. While not the most comfortable grip ever created, the Puggio does feature a very secure grip. The wasted form is also a constant feature of the Puggio, although its pronunciation varies. Overall length of a Puggio blade varies widely and can range from about 6 inches or 16 centimeters to over 14 inches or 36 centimeters. Blades towards the longer end of that spectrum are rarer, but they do exist. While the blade shape closely resembles that of the Gladius, one major difference is the presence of a structural midrib running down the center of the blade. A midrib of some kind is almost always found on Puggio daggers and is one of their defining traits. In general, wider blades are typically used for cutting, but the Puggio is one of the exceptions to that rule of thumb. The midrib acts to stiffen the blade for thrusts and the wasted profile acts as a means of providing a large entrance wound with the wide tip of the blade while eliminating unnecessary weight by necking down back towards the center of the blade. Puggio grip construction has two prevalent methods. One is the through tang method common in many fixed blade knives today. The other is a variation of a half tang with the tang ending at the grip's central lobe. The scales would then be pinned into place on the tang. Obviously, not all Puggios are the same. Blade length, pommel shape, grip construction, and even decorations greatly differ between blades. However, it is possible for us to classify Puggios into three different categories based upon time period and characteristics. Let's start with the origins of the Puggio and the first blade category. If you've watched my video on the Gladius, you know that the Gladius originated from Roman culture. The Puggio, on the other hand, in spite of its similarities, originates from the Iberian Peninsula with the Celtiberian peoples. The oldest daggers featuring the bilobular grip have been excavated from the Meseta region and dated back to the 4th century BC. Similar blades have also been found in the Valencia region and Catalonia and are dated to slightly after and descended from the Meseta blades. These blades were essentially copied verbatim by the Romans when they were first adopted. The first Celtiberian bilobular daggers and the first period Republican Puggios are essentially indistinguishable from each other outside of historical context. There is no exact date for the adoption of the Roman Puggio, but the first appearances of the Puggio can be identified in the 2nd century BC. The oldest possible Roman Puggios were excavated from Castileo and La Atalea. However, it is impossible to determine for sure if these blades are in fact Roman or rather captured Celtiberian blades. The Romans engaged in several wars throughout the second century with the Celtiberians, with the conflicts ending in the middle of the century. Complete pacification of the peninsula would take another century to complete. The close resemblance of the Celtiberian dagger and the period one Puggio combined with the martial conflict between the two cultures creates a mixing pot of uncertainty as to where the Romans begin to make their own Puggions. Roman blades could theoretically be as old as the campaigns in 218 to 201 BC against Hannibal, who made use of Celtiberian mercenaries. A more likely possibility is that the Roman Puggio came into being around the mid 2nd century BC towards the end of the Iberian campaigns. These first period Puggiones are the smallest of the three categories 
and are about the size of daggers as we think about today. Blades were typically between 17 to 22 centimeters and about 3 to 4 centimeters across. That's about 6 and 1 half to 8 and 1 half inches long and a little over an inch wide. Pommels were circular, as were the central knob in the center of the grip. These grips could be constructed a couple of ways. One method was that two metallic scales could be cut out to match the shape of the half tang and then pinned into place with spacer material forming the center of the back half of the grip. Another option was to use a laminate method where the main form of the grip was created with wood or bone similar to the previous method, but then overlaid with thinner laminar of sheet metal, very similar to the construction of Roman swords of the 8th and 7th centuries BC. Decorations were typically not present on blades from this time period. Period 1 Pugiones were largely relegated in their distribution to the Iberian regions until about halfway through the 1st century BC. Period 1 Pugiones, dating from after this time, have been discovered in areas of modern day France, followed by areas throughout western territories of Rome. The most memorable location we know the Pugio would turn up in would be the Theater of Pompeii in Rome during the Ides of March. The assassination of Julius Caesar is of course an event all of you have heard about. Over 60 senators conspired to murder Caesar, ultimately stabbing him 23 times and killing him, as well as having a medical procedure and a salad named after him. Now the Puggio was certainly not the only blade available to Roman aristocrats, so how can we be certain that the Puggio was the blade behind the murder of Caesar? Well, to start off, we have six different ancient authors that explicitly reference the use of the Puggio during the assassination. Additionally, there are reports and quotes stating that multiple of the belligerent politicians were the owners of Puggios. Finally, you may be familiar with these coins. These are some of the most famous coins in existence. They date from 44 BC, the year of the assassination. One side shows a relief of the leader of the conspiracy, Marcus Junius Brutus. On the other side are two daggers, one of which closely resembles the profile of the Puggio as previously discussed. The other closely represents another Puggio with a more unique pommel than usually seen. So, my question to you for this video is this. Do you think the Puggio was the blade that killed Julius Caesar? Let me know in the comments down below. Incidentally, the first period Puggio would not survive Caesar terribly long either. The first of the second period Puggios and the last of the first period Puggios would be created between 30 and 12 BC, transitioning us to the Imperial Puggio. The arrival of the second period Puggio was accompanied by a couple of changes in the overall features of the Puggio. The pommel of the Puggio morphed into that of a D-shape, often with three pins in the base of the pommel. Overall blade length and width increased, going up to 25 centimeters long, or just short of 10 inches. Blade width could now be found to be as wide as 7 centimeters, or 2 and 3 quarters inches. The central lobe in the grip lost its well-defined circular shape and evolved into essentially two identical knobs on either side of the grip. Around the year 50 AD, another method of grip construction was introduced. The blade would be forged with a tapering through tang, and a wooden or bone core would be crafted and a channel cut inside. The channel for the tang was cut to be as close and tight of a fit as possible. The grip would then be forced on and peened into place. Such grips were more akin to that of the Puggio's larger cousin, the Gladius, and this method was more economical for mass production. Production seems to have favored this newer and easier method of construction during the second half of the first century. The exact shape of these grips is unknown as the organic grip material for these blades has not survived, but the two general theories are that they either reflected the original grip shape or they could have been more akin to that of the gladius. Neither can be proven, but there is a lack of substantial evidence to support the proliferation of gladius style grips among Pugiones. Another feature of the period to Puggio was the abundance of decoration. While decorations were not unknown on the previous Period 1 blades, Period 2 Puggios could be quite ornate. The sheaths in particular would bear numerous engravings and decorations, while the pins holding the Puggio and its sheath together were often colorful additions to its appearance. More pins than are required seem to be quite common for decorative purposes as well. 
The three pins often found at the base of the D-shaped pommel don't actually serve any structural purpose. Speaking of colorful additions, a special thank you to today's sponsor, Axter Wallet. Axter has a variety of slim profile wallets for the EDZ enthusiast looking to upgrade his wallet. These wallets securely carry six cards in an RFID protected compartment. Your cards are easily accessible with the press of a button, which fans your cards out for your selection. Axter has a variety of options for everyone, from the more traditional leather parliamentary wallets to their minimalist carbon fiber card holder. They even have something that can match the Peugeot's bling. And for those prone to losing their wallets, they have tracker cards available as well. Make sure the rest of your EDC kit keeps up with your knife life. Hit up the link in the description below to pick up your new wallet and be sure to use this promo code in order to get up to 30% off in their spring sale. Now, on to the third Peugeot. The final period three Peugeot made its debut at the beginning of the second century AD. The arrival of this new Peugeot was most notably heralded by the increase in size. Peugeot blades can now be found up to 45 centimeters or almost 18 inches long. Blade widths could be found up to eight centimeters or over three inches. The wasted profile of the blade became exceedingly acute. The D-shaped pommel of the period two Peugeot's was largely displaced with that of a bilobal shape, while the central grip knob decreased further in size to a more unassuming form. Surprisingly, the vibrant decorations seen on the period two Peugeot appeared to disappear on the period three Peugeot around the third century AD. In comparison to the blades of period two, the period three Peugeots look blatantly austere. The reasons for this reversal are unclear. It's unclear when exactly the Peugeot fell out of use, but the youngest discovered Peugeots in Kunzig, Germany can be dated to roughly 250 AD. Aside from that, there is no record explicitly detailing the dismissal of the Peugeot from Roman kit. What we can be sure of is that the Peugeot did not survive long after the fall of the Roman Empire in 476 AD. How long the Peugeot served in that intervening 200 years is up for debate. Let me know in the comments which historical blade you would like to see next, but be sure to check that I haven't done it already. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing, and I hope to see you around the channel again. For those interested in obtaining your own Peugeot, check out Pierre Sierkovich's work. He is the craftsman behind this dagger. You can find his info in the description below. Stay safe and keep living the knife life.